Ladies and gentlemen, honored colleagues, the president of the Montpellier Metropole, welcome to everyone in this amphitheater and those behind your screens as well. I'm really delighted to welcome you here today and to be here together to introduce this ceremony of official presentation of the 2021-2022 Make It Researchers, the Montpellier Advanced Knowledge Institute on Transitions. This is a southern center, our Make It project. I'm speaking French because you're all French speakers here in front of me. So Make It is part of an international project that we wanted to put in place within the Montpellier University as part of the new Montpellier University, which was launched in last September. And it's been put in place following extensive discussions and construct collective construction between the university and its 15 partners who have been working together for four years on a single project looking to increase international visibility of the Montpellier University of Excellence and to get the investment of the future label and also increase international visibility of the city of Montpellier, of the Montpellier metropolis and the university. We are part of the eyesight movement which is funded by the state and so this university at the heart of our project is built around three pillars which are linked into uh, an evaluation of our positioning of our strengths and and weaknesses this is feed care protect so this gives a particular visibility to our scientific community working in these areas food the environment and ecology and then agriculture so this is an, an, an aspect that we've wanted to put forward in our institution and because we have all of the research institutions working on these three themes in montpellier the University of Montpellier, beyond these three social issues, is looking to focus on the South, the global South. So for health, of course, but also on the other issues that have are of social concern. And we're seeing this starting to bear fruit in terms of our visibility and international rankings. Um, the University of Montpellier is now within the top 200 of the Shanghai ranking with particular visibility on ecology because we're in the top three and for two years we were we were number one uh, in the area of ecology. So this new university which has been part of a merger of institutions we wanted this to be something that was innovative. We have a particular visibility because of our positioning, but we also are innovative because of the tools that we're um, deploying within the, the institution. So the idea of the university is to encourage discussions between uh, within the scientific community and bring researchers from a number of different backgrounds. We want there to be innovation in our relationship with science, our desire to debate, because the focus and goal of Make It is to be able to talk about tr transitions, about controversial subjects, and in order to feed into current thinking. I don't want to take too much time because the uh, director of Make It needs to present Make It uh, in a few minutes, but, but we're now presenting the second year of Make It. This is the second time that we are welcoming cohorts of researchers. So perhaps I could just briefly talk about season one, the first year. We launched this first 
audition and we didn't know if it was going to work, whether it was going to succeed in creating a, creating a dynamic around our institute, whether we'd managed to bring together all the different scientific communities on the site and researchers from abroad who were coming to Montpellier for this first edition of Make It, and we hoped that they would stay in Montpellier to continue to work with the scientific community here. And I want to say that the first edition of Make It was a real success because 10 researchers and one uh, scientist came as uh, research fellows, Make It fellows, and there are also a number of young researchers who've joined us working on the key pillars that we're thinking about. They've been working on sustainable cities. Um, negative attitudes towards vaccination and there's been it's shown that with a, a a clear focus that has had a lot of impact on research in general and then we've also managed to develop partnerships with European institutes so there are now 20 researchers in total that have been hosted by Make It during its first year of activity from 15 different nationalities and from all the continents in the world. And half of them represent what we tend to call the, the global south. So this backs up our focus on, on international regions. These researchers have been hosted by 12 different research units. Uh, who have been involved in welcoming these researchers and hosting them in this first edition. There's also been a whole series of events that have been organized by Make It. I'm thinking about the Action Research School in January on con controversy around COVID. Then recently, an event focused on Africa, then science society events that have been organized. And these are just an example of what's been going on. So that we've come to the end of the first edition of Make It, and now we're going to focus on the second edition of Make It. So I'm delighted to welcome eight new researchers for 2021-2022. In particular, uh, thank you and a welcome to those of you who are already with us and have been with us for uh, some months already. I'm going to mention your names now. I hope I pronounce them rightly. William Mosley, Marguerite Zvatavin, Anton Nekrutenko, Mirti Lacoste, Katerina Makova have all been with us for a few months already. And then there is Kazem Zibara and Marcelo Lorenzo who have just arrived. And then there is Craig Gorgon who's going to be arriving in the next few weeks. I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. Please do forgive me if I have, but we will have the opportunity to get to know one another over the year to come. So you're being hosted as part of the uh, Make It Fellows program. And this is uh, a first for two of you who are going to be working with the French Institutes of Advanced Studies in partnership with the Advanced Studies Institutes of other cities. I'm also note that we're focusing on two geographical horizons. We have uh, representatives from um, the Netherlands, from um, Lebanon, and from the United States. Four of you are working there. There's a particular accent this year on biology and health, because we've got a high range of skills in this area, and we want to see a good balance of these different uh, skills of make it represented in the researchers. So every year is different, and that's what's really interesting about hosting new researchers. Thank you very much for having chosen the University of Montpellier. Thank you for working alongside us. 
thank you as well because he's the vice president of the um, uh, Montpellier metropolis as well thank you for choosing Montpellier because it's the most beautiful city in the world there's nothing better than nowhere better than Montpellier despite our traffic jams etc i'm afraid i won't be able to be with you all morning because i have some admis administrative task that i must attend to but i hope that this period of work for you will be very fruitful it's a real pleasure for us to fulfill one of the missions of what a university is in terms of its public service because we're focused on training and research but not only that universities must also have an opening must be open to international input in terms of training research and must feed in and this must feed into the whole of our institution and then working on transitions and controversial subjects shows that univer the university is a place of knowledge and reflection sometimes we hear at the moment people speaking off the cuff affirming strong opinions very quickly and clearly but we need to take time to step back and think and think about those and feed off those who are doing work welcome to everybody and i look forward to meeting you within make it this year Bien, bonjour à, à tout le monde. Good morning, everybody. Vice President Clara, Philippe. As Philippe has said, the president of the university, we have there's an immense ambition here behind this institute. It's a political and institutional ambition to um present our knowledge to the world but there's also this desire to to stimulate research through the space that we have created we want to change the world we want what we're doing to contribute to changing the world that's what we're focused on yes it's an immense goal we want of course to remain humble but we are we are working between this kind of big vision of changing the world and working at our level i can see here that everyone here has is wearing their mask of course we're in a context that impacts mobility and hosting people from abroad it's not very easy at the moment as philippe mentioned this first session of make it and this second session of make it of course the pandemic has had an impact on the conditions of hosting on the flexibility that we've needed of the rules we've had to put in place and the attractiveness of what we're offering so i'm not going to go into the details of make it because uh, that's i've done that before and your your friends here you you, you know us and you can find out more later by asking questions or going to the website but what we're really all about is that we're in a learning process a process of thinking of reflecting of continuing to improve we really are quite proud of the first year of make it it wasn't straightforward to host all of the researchers and to run these different international events with about a hundred speakers from uh, people all around the world with thousands of online participants so despite the restrictions we've been able to move forward and we do encounter um, obstacles but we're wanting to move forward and this year we're wanting to host in the best conditions those who have applied and we are delighted that they've been selected because we can really see that the uh, the level of selection is 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 rising and we really want to learn 
lessons from what happened in season one of Make It and even before season one as part of the experimental session. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be mixing in video portraits. Thank you to the video teams who've done all their work. And we're going to, we'll also have people speaking live and then also other people speaking remotely. Olivier, Olivier Boyan, who's the, the head of the French network of advanced studies institutes, and he'll be speaking remotely in a few minutes. But I'm just going to start very quickly with a very quick uh, presentation. I won't present all of the projects because they will, their videos will present much better than I could. But if we could, if we can just present all of the researchers that are being hosted, the eight researchers of those eight, one of them has already left. He came for four months from September to December. This is a geographer from the McAllister College in the USA who was working on agricultural transitions and agroecological agro transitions in Africa. And this is one of the interesting things with Make It is he was able to come here to compare English speaking approaches and French speaking approaches in terms of the analysis of the situation. And we want to create a space to do that. That's really an amazing thing to be able to do. And so then there are four other people, Katerina Makova. All of these researchers are hosted by a Montpellier a laboratory and they share their time between uh, the work within the laboratory and collective work within the Make It Institute. So Katerina Makiva is a professor of biology in Pennsylvania State University in the US and she's working on evolving genomes and she's, she'll explain this, she explain things that I really don't understand. I under I understood that there was DNA, but now there is non-B DNA. Then there is Anton, Anton Nekrutenko, who also comes from Pennsylvania State University. He is a biochemical professor and also works in biomolecular studies. He's working on a platform called Galaxy, which is analyzing the ge uh, genetics of microbes, microbial genetics. Then there is Mertie Lacoste, who is French, as you can guess from her name, but she's coming to us from Australia and she's being co-hosted, just to make it even more complex, by ITAP, INRM and Innovation by three units. And her project is on the use of digital tools for farming in order to encourage agroecological transitions. Then there is Margaret Svateven. Margaret, can I find her here? Where is she? Oh, she just went out for a minute, but she'll she'll come back. She's being hosted in Geo, and she comes from the UNESCO Dev Center in the Netherlands, and she's working on the governance and the use of water Delft to Montpellier focused on water from the the UNESCO Center for Water. This is an amazing collaboration for us. She, she, she is not a, a Make It Fellow, but she's with the FIAS, the French Institute of Advanced Studies, which we are we are part of thanks to the French network of advanced studies and that's linked us into that dynamic too. And then there are two people who have just arrived who we don't know very well yet. Kazem Zibira, who is a professor of genetics in the University of Lebanon in Beirut, who's being hosted by IGH and IGN men to work on the therapeutic prognostics 
for around leukemia. And then there is Marcelo Lorenzo, who is from Italy. I haven't always given the nationality and where they're working, but you can see that not only are they uh, coming here, but themselves, they have um, been mobile because they come from another country uh, than the country they're working from. So he's working in Brazil with a Brazilian center. He's going to be hosted here. He arrived three days ago and working on the Chagas disease. And then there is Craig Gorgon, who's going to be arriving, who's a professor of medical engineering, who's going to be working on the combination of cardiac and cerebral imaging in order to anticipate cord cardiovascular problems. He comes from Perdue University and will be hosted by Phil Meldex. And he will be arriving in a month's time. So that's, uh, we're in a, a different kind of dynamic than before, than last year. And we've selected 10 new researchers who should arrive in September next year. Of course, it's uh, we're in a normal selection process, but at that time, there'll be more of an agroecological focus and natural catastrophe focus, but we're trying to keep a balance between feed care and protect in a permanent way with new nationalities again, with new disciplines, including physics and chemistry, with an increasing level of selection because there is an increasing number of applicants. So that's in terms of, of the make it fellows. I'm just going to say something about the cohort. I know that some of you have participated in this. We're creating a team that will be working together over a period of six months. Last year, it was on fake news or weak signs. This year, the Scientific Council, and this has been validated. We have the, the theme of what science in a time of crisis the applications that we received did not allow us to constitute a sufficiently strong team, so we've extended this call. But on the 7th of April, we will be organizing a major international conference here in Montpellier, and uh, we will be hearing more about that later. And Sarah, we have Fias and Kat the French Institute of Advanced Studies in Social Science, CAT, Constructive Advanced Thinking, which is a European call from the European Network of Advanced Studies. Philippe talked to us about this earlier. We've already been able to welcome two teams here about sustainable cities, for instance, and others will be coming. In terms of outlook, and I will be ending on this, we need to look to the past in order to look to the future. In the future, we have been contacted by the European Network of Advanced advanced studies in order to join them and i would like to thank them thank you olivier this is through you that we have been able to uh, join join this european network of institutes for advanced studies we have training with them and the link with the charmiu european university we've proposed extending this experience within a European context. I would like to welcome Gilles, who is with us today, who is director of the doctoral college. I'm talking very conditionally here. During the Africa-France summit, we would love an institute for advanced studies at an African level and a nomadic level. So Ashimbe has been entrusted with this and was involved in Africa 2020, which was mentioned earlier. And we will be looking to be building networks with institutes for advanced studies 
in Africa. We're going to continue with internal seminars every Thursday to bring together all of the resident fellows, but also international conferences. All, all of our fellows must organize one international conference. There are not many obligations, but this is one of them. And we're trying to work with the CRUS at the moment to see how we can receive their support in hosting the researchers that we welcome in residence in the future. We have an excellent scientific council that's being renewed at the moment, and they're supporting us in everything that we're doing. And I thank uh, Kemi for the presidents of this, and we will be looking to the future together. Thank you very much, Stephanie Andes from Esconscience, who has helped with the videos that we are going to be watching and i would like to thank uh, marianne chomel brenda and sarah who have been working every single day and uh, our institute would not be able to function without their hard work thank you very much <laughs>
My name is Katarina Makova. I'm a professor of biology at Penn State University in the United States. I am uh, coming to my kit under the Visiting Scientist program, and I'm going to be here for a year. I'm being hosted by ESEM, which is the Institute of Evolutionary Sciences in Montpellier. My research project here with my kit concerns non-canonical DNA, which is also called non-B DNA. This uh, type of DNA has captured the interest of scientists uh, very recently because of its great importance. The non-B DNA is known to be as curse and blessing for the genome and also for the cell. This is the type of DNA that is involved in many regulatory processes, but it also can represent a problem for uh, replication of DNA. It is well known that, for example, in some cancers, the breakage of chromosomes occurs preferentially at non-B DNA. As a result, it is really crucial for us to understand the role of non-B DNA in evolution, but also in disease, as well as in agriculture. The formation of non-B DNA is transient and can be regulated by salinity in the soil. Therefore, it can change depending on the drought conditions in plants. Well, I wanted to come uh, for a sabbatical to Montpellier for many, many years because of the vibrant scientific community here. And uh, a colleague of mine sent me an announcement about my kit and I thought that it would be a perfect fit for my sabbatical application. And I was really fortunate to win this fellowship and I'm looking forward to staying here for one year, interacting with many colleagues in the Montpellier area. There are at least a couple of things that are special about me. Professionally, I never go for low-hanging fruit. I usually investigate scientific questions that are difficult, but are extremely interesting, important, and exciting. Personally, I really like uh, traveling. I really like exploring new environments, but most importantly, I really like meeting new people. <laughs> Bonjour à toutes et tous. Good morning, everybody. Mr. President Philippe, Vice President Patrick, dear friends from the University of Montpellier, it is a true pleasure and an honor for me to be here and to share these special times with you today. Thank you very much to our university and private partners, the MUSE that has made the creation of this Advanced Institute of Knowledge possible. There are one of five in, in France, and this is a sign of the quality of research at Montpellier. We just heard about this vibrant scientific community of Montpellier, which is very precise. This is in the field of environment, biology, health, agriculture, and food. This is a crucial intersection for the sustainable development targets under the United Nations. And this is what we're looking at today. The Montpellier Advanced Knowledge Institute on Transitions, Make It, is able to bring disciplines together along with their researchers from a local and international level. It also brings together science and politics, and this actively participates to accelerating transitions in our world, which is currently facing a global pandemic. And this is an urgent need for our world. We know as elected officials that by working together hand in hand with political decision makers, civil society, researchers and companies, need to be working together in order to face up to global challenges. By comparing 
internationally the studies and local solutions we need to share best practice and solutions in order to overcome the climate change environmental and social challenges we are facing the montpellier metropole metropolitan area is committed to this we are attentive to scientific production in its territory montpellier is resolutely involved in developing sustainable policy for food waste management mobility what we call soft mobility conceiving the montpellier of tomorrow the city of tomorrow without forgetting the main driver in any city policy the social link and i could even call this social progress to give you an example i would like to mention our focus on food policy and mr nabilas has supported us through this in order to create a the very first territorial food plan to be adopted by a metropolis in france this has been developed in close cooperation with CIRAD, unesco global food and montpellier soup agro through all of this montpellier is now one of the starting points in sustainable food by promoting short circuits we work with school canteens so that from the very youngest age this concept of good food and local food can take root in collective intelligence from the very start of the school curriculum also on an international level we are a host city of the mayors that signed the pact in 2019 these political choices universities and research centers in montpellier are contributing to global recognition of the metropolis of montpellier there are synergies that allow us to disseminate our knowledge in order to take relevant political decisions. This is what we need to be doing together. Through the MUSE project, Montpellier is proud, proud of the new Advanced Knowledge Institute, Make It. We are very proud of the excellent knowledge produced. We are proud of the place that you are giving us on the international scene. We are also proud of our capacity to welcome and receive people, leaving no man or woman behind. We, do, we want to see beyond geographic zone in order to develop a sustainable society, or as the president said, this world of tomorrow, let's make the change. Make it pay special attention to controversy and to the truth of information. This is often ignored today, but it is vital in order to ensure fair access to knowledge and development of a citizen critical thinking. This starts from the youngest possible age, like I said, for food. Margaret, Mirti, Craig, Marcelo, Kazam, Katrina, Antu, and William. The metropolis of Montpellier and its president offer you the warmest possible welcome to you researchers of international renown from the four corners of the globe. I would like to congratulate the interdisciplinarity effort that has been put in place, which has been expressed in the first two presentations from governance to plants, soil health, journalistic analysis of discourse. We need this cross-cutting approach 
and the knowledge that you are producing that we as political decision makers are able to draw on in our decisions. We are with you and alongside you to help you to accomplish the missions that you have set yourselves. We are working with you and you're helping us to be able to build as quickly as possible the world of tomorrow. I'm going to say just a few words in English. Enjoy this fantastic city, this vibrant hotbed of uh, scientific uh, activity, and make Montpellier the place where we work together to change the world. Thank you for being here and thank you for choosing Montpellier. Thank you. My name is Myrtille Lacoste, I am French and Australian, and I come from Curtin University in Western Australia. I am here for 10 months to uh, undertake a fellowship, which is a partnership between FIAS, the French Institute for Advanced Studies, and MACIT, the Montpellier Advanced Knowledge Institute for Transition. I am hosted by three digit ag units, Innovation, ETAP, and MRM. I am here to work on farmer-centric on-farm experimentation, also known as OFE. We know that the major problems the world faced are uh, linked to agriculture, from uh, poverty and hunger to climate change. And we also know that to solve those problems, those massive issues, we need to think together. So on-farm experimentation, OFE, just does that. It actually brings people together around mutually beneficial experimentation that is usually conducted at large scales, or at least at the ones that matters to farmers, in their own farm. And it emphasizes co-learning, so productive um, discussions between the different parties. And what is really special about OFE is that it aligns the interest of all the participants. Farmers get management insights, researchers get data, while industry professionals are able to get opportunities to demonstrate the value of their technologies, for instance, or other practices. OFE is actually growing across the world, and that's really great news. The issue is that these communities typically are very fragmented, so they require guidance and support. My project is about this. For instance, we have made huge progress defining what are key OFE principles. We also are devising strategies to support individuals and institutions so that OFE can grow worldwide. And this is really important because if we change the way we produce knowledge, we could transform agriculture globally. I applied to the uh, FIAS Makit Fellowship for three reasons. The first one is that I knew this would be an environment of excellence because Montpellier is an agricultural hub for research. The second reason is because multidisciplinarity was actually a criteria for the application and I wanted to hear about the best thinkers and I haven't been disappointed. The third reason is that the fellowship provided me with um, the support, uh, materially and financially, to have the freedom to explore and do things that I usually wouldn't be able to do in, uh, uh, within my academic life. So this has been extremely useful. Something that people not really be aware of is that I'm actually a bit of an adventurer and the latest is that I, uh, very soon after my twins were born, uh, I jumped on a plane with my family to go live at the edge of the world in the Falkland Islands near the South Pole for two years. It was quite the experience and yes, we did see a lot of penguins. I'm Anton Nikotenko, I'm from the United States, originally I'm from Ukraine. Uh, I am a Makit Fellow, I am here for 10 months and I am doing my fellowship at CEF at CNRS. 
Uh, my research project is about building an accessible system for uh, global data analysis, in particular sequence analysis. And we are in the middle of global pandemic, so the system is ideally suited for analysis of SARS-CoV-2 data, for example. Some of the problems that we're having with this is um, there are a lot of barriers preventing people from doing meaningful analysis of COVID data. And some of these challenges are lack of funding, some of the nationalistic barriers is that, for example, some countries don't want other countries to analyze their data, and also technical challenges. We can't quite solve the funding or nationalistic challenges, but we can solve the technical issues. We provide infrastructure for storing data, from analyzing data, from distributing the results, and ultimately uh, disseminating their findings, such as, for example, novel mutations. I've chosen Make It because of its goal to uh, foster interdisciplinary research. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, very interdisciplinary because it combines biology, quantitative biology, it combines it with computer science and also with, uh, with engineering aspects, building systems. So France has a unique interdisciplinary environment and in particular here in Montpellier uh, is one of the best evolutionary programs in the world, in particular molecular evolution. This is the science about how things evolve from the molecular standpoint, from the standpoint of the DNA. So again, that was probably the most ideal place to do a, a kind of international fellowship. So I, I, it wasn't a hard choice, really. The special thing about me is I like to travel and um, I always liked French. I hope that one day I will actually be able to speak French. I, I understand I can read, but I can't quite speak. And um, so that's one of my unofficial goals. Speak at the end of my 10 month uh, period here. Good morning, everybody. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Director, dear colleagues, I am sorry not to be with you in person in Montpellier today. This is the second time that I have taken part in this very interesting presentation of the Make It residents. And for the second time, unfortunately, it has been remotely. I really do hope that for the third season, I will be able to be with you in person like I was right at the start of the design of the Institute alongside Patrick Caron in particular. I would like to talk more particularly about the possibilities for French, European and international collaboration across the network of institutes for advanced studies. I wanted to start my very short speech by congratulating all of the stakeholders in Montpellier from the university, from the metropolis, from all public and private partners who are involved in Make It. This beautiful project has become a real reality with a clear identity, as the president showed us. The specific feature of Make It in terms of its thematic research, transition for the environment and health, and the interest on controversy and openness to the global south, is, is meaning that uh, there is great momentum in France. There are eight institutes in France, but the Montpellier Institute uh, very soon emerged with a clear identity expressing the quality of our preparation. But it's complicated taking this into the, into the reality and especially with a pandemic. So I would like to congratulate all of the stakeholders on the ground in Montpellier for working in a very short time span in the period of a few months. And here we're in the second season and this institute has become very quickly established as an important institute for advanced studies. We have seen their partnership with the FIAS European funded program 
Montpellier is working alongside Paris, Lyon, Marseille, and Nantes on this project. The specifics promoted by the Montpellier site are highly regarded and recognized now. I'm going to share my screen with you. You should be able to see it, and I'm going to show you just three slides showing you the opportunity, the networking opportunities within the Institutes for Advanced Study. I'm lucky enough to work with the French network of Institutes for Advanced Studies, and I will be able to give you an overview of the French opportunities, but I've also been looking after the European network of Institutes for Advanced Studies. There are 25 institutes in 17 different countries, and over the past year, I have been coordinator of the global network of Institutes for Advanced Studies, which explains the UBS, University Base Institute for Advanced Studies. I would like to show you that Montpellier is one of the small dots here in the bottom of France. It is now part of a global network of institutes for advanced studies. This is from Bielefeld Centrum for Interdisciplinary Research in Germany. They have sought to map the 80 plus institutes for advanced studies across the world. What's interesting for Make It is that we can see the emergence of certain institutes for advanced studies in the Southern Hemisphere in Latin America, Argentina, Brazil. We can see two institutes in South Africa, in Ghana, in Morocco, in Southeast Asia as well. There's a real opportunity for collaboration in France, in Europe, but also globally. And as I often say, these institutes are fast tracks for international scientific collaboration. So this is the global map. If I had presented this map 20 years ago, there would be perhaps only 10 to 15 percent of these points on the map. There has been a real growth in institutes for advanced study across Europe and the world. I want to show you the European map now. I'm not going to be explaining the different colored points and what that means, but you can see that there is a significant number of institutes for advanced studies in, in Europe, in France, in German, but also in Central and Eastern Europe and in the United Kingdom. There is an op opportunity here for significant collaboration. And the president of University of Montpellier and the vice president of uh, Montpellier were able to explain the real opportunities through creating these institutes, it's a local issue, but also gives opportunities for international collabor collaboration. Let me give you some examples now of networking initiatives. These UBS networks of around 50 institutes for advanced studies across the world develop initiatives that allow people to work together. As Patrick reminded us, this is about learning, innovation, interdisciplinarity, which are at the heart of the Montpellier Institute. These are common features across all of UBS. We call these learning communities, breeding zones of new ideas, which facilitates encounters between institutes and institutions that share the same philosophy with regard to scientific exploration today and tomorrow. I would like to mention three types of potential partnership. Within the UBS network, there is a great 
initiative that Marianne Schumela and uh, Patrick uh, Caron will be able to share with you in greater detail. It's called Intercontinental Academia, which is very close to the, the DNA, the, the heart of what MAKE IT is. So this is across both hemispheres, north and south, producing a partnership between 10 to 15 partners on a major theme, which is of great relevance for political decision making. It brings together very high level researchers to support a team of fellows who are generally around 30 already working, they're confirmed in their field, but we'd like to continue multidisciplinary work on this topic. It works extremely well. The current intercontinental academia is about intelligence and artificial in intelligence and is based in Paris and other countries, laws, rigidity and dynamics, human dignity and time working in both the northern and southern hemisphere. There are very confirmed mentor scientists and then mid-career fellows who all work together in an interdisciplinary way in order to think about public policy of the future. The second initiative in which Make It is directly involved is a small network that we call CAT, Constructive Advanced Thinking. Make It has already welcomed two groups of young researchers. These are smaller groups of emerging researchers. The idea is to facilitate the construction of collaborative projects with younger, more emerging researchers, giving them the opportunity to reside in a number of different institutes for advanced learning and advanced studies across Europe. I would like to thank Make It for getting involved in this fully with partnerships that are very appreciated by other European partners. The third platform that I wanted to tell you about and the third opportunity for collaboration is something that we developed with the Paris Institute for Advanced Studies and the Netias Ubias platform. This is the World Pandemic Research Network working in human, economic, social fields. We wanted to create a real-time database which is indexed in order to understand which research projects are ongoing or being developed by teams right across the world. We've developed infrastructure that can be duplicated for other themes. It is fully open source, GDPR compliant, interactive, scholarly driven, and it is the kind of platform that could be reused or adapted by other institutes on other topics when we would like a sort of visibility and support for international scientific collaboration this kind of platform is a true accelerator of collaboration over 1000 projects have been recorded on this platform which is available in 10 different languages this is a way of accelerating international scientific collaboration the fourth tool or example of collaboration that we can have from the Institute for Advanced Studies. Claire Hart reminded me of this. In recent years, we've developed an international panel on social progress. You, she mentioned this issue of social progress as a major objective of public policy and also our scientific research. After an initial four-year cycle, so we've worked with hundreds of social scientists across the world and published 
we're going to now create a second phase of this where we try to bring stakeholders and researchers together. This is the kind of project that will allow make it to think about the world of tomorrow by working with stakeholders and researchers. And this could be of interest to the Institute of Montpellier and to you as researchers more generally. Congratulations to all of you who are here today. The quality of the residents and the quality of, of the, the, the welcome that you're receiving as well. I hope that you will have a great impact by getting fully involved in the French network and European network of Institutes for Advanced Studies. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Marcelo Lorenzo. I am Argentinian and I am a researcher at the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation of the Ministry of Health of Brazil. I will be hosted by Mivejek Biardet and funded by the Make It program of the University of Montpellier during the first semester of 2022. There, I will develop a project related to Chagas disease. This disease is transmitted to humans by triatomine bugs and it affects Latin American populations dedicated to subsistence agriculture. The transmission happens inside houses and in their surroundings and the main control method for the transmission of Chagas disease is the elimination of insect populations. Some of the main vector species transmitting Chagas disease have developed insecticide resistance and due to this control methods are being limited in their capacity to avoid transmission of the disease. Based on this we consider that it is necessary to develop new control methods that are more rationally based and that rely on our knowledge on the biology of Chagas disease vectors. In our laboratory we have developed a research that demonstrated that females of triatomines emit others that attract males. And we have shown that a synthetic version of these others allow us to manipulate male behavior. Based on this, we proposed the development of an attract and kill device baited with these others in order to interfere with the reproduction of these insects. This will be developed in an eco-health approach, and therefore we need the interaction with sociologists, public health specialists, economists, and entomologists. The implementation of such a control method is expected to improve the health quality of Latin American populations dedicated to subsistence agriculture, while decreasing the amount of insecticides that is applied in these areas and through the improvement of the health of these target communities, increasing the productivity that they obtain. The reason why I applied to the Make It program is the possibility of a multidisciplinary interaction with diverse action, actors in the Montpellier area. This will foster the possibilities of developing a successful implementation of a control method to impact the life of millions of Latin Americans. Regarding mentioning something special about me, well, I would highlight my garden and the love of plants I have, which allows me to produce many greens. My name is Kazem Zibaha. Uh, I come from Lebanon. 
I work at the Lebanese University uh, in Beirut, uh, which is uh, the only state university in Lebanon. I teach genetics, genomics, and molecular biology. And uh, I have a lab in Lebanon uh, at the platform of research, uh, which uh, works on cancer and genetics. I was accepted the Make It program in, in Montpellier, uh, where I'm going to spend about six months uh, in two labs, the lab of uh, Dr. Edouard Bertrand at the Institute of Human Genetics, and the lab of Dr. Guillaume Bossis, who is at the Institute of Molecular Genetics. Concerning my research project, uh, I work on cancer, uh, particularly on acute myeloid leukemia, which is a type of blood cancer. Now, through uh, various uh, robust bioinformatics techniques, we have um, discovered a set of genes, a signature of a number of genes that are commonly deregulated in uh, acute myeloid leukemia. Now, among the uh, top of these genes uh, is one called the SPINK2. And we think that this gene is implicated in resistance to chemotherapy and in relapse. And that's why uh, the program that I'm going to follow in Montpellier is going to work on this gene on different objectives. One of the objectives is to uh, study uh, the role of this gene in the aggressiveness of acute myeloid leukemia. Another aim is to uh, study the mode of action of this gene. And here we are going to use cutting edge technology of uh, bioinformatics, proteomics, transcriptomics and, and various other, other techniques. And uh, the third objective is going to study the uh, role of uh, uh, SPIN2 in chemo resistance and relapse. And the, uh, finally, the last aim would be to study the implication of uh, this gene uh, in stemness in what we call self-renewal of leukemic stem cells. Now, all of these objectives are going to be in the two labs that I have mentioned earlier, but also in, in, with other collaborations in, uh, with the lab of Charles Sellier, who works on uh, mathematical modeling and bioinformatics, and the lab of Dr. Moreau, who works on uh, other types of cancer. Reason why I applied to make it program is basically because it has multidisciplinarity, and it allows me to meet a lot of uh, researchers and uh, uh, institutes that are present in Montpellier with excellent uh, expertise in the fields that I'm, I'm studying. And uh, uh, also uh, because the Make It program is about transition and one of my aims is to, is to translate my research from the lab uh, into the society by providing a prognostic and diagnostic tool using this gene. Finally, concerning um, uh, something special about me, well, I like uh, nature a lot and um, I like to plant and to work in the garden. Uh, that's why I have a house in the mountains in my original country and I spent, um, I spent most of my time in the garden uh, planting a lot of things. <laughs>
vocation, like Patrick said, this vocation of changing the world. I think everyone agrees that there is a need for an urgent change, but what change? In what direction? Who decides how quickly we change? There are questions that go much beyond, go f far beyond scientific and technical questions. They're ethical questions. Who makes the decisions? And I think Make It is the brilliant place to talk about these issues for two reasons. My, make It breaks out of the well-worn paths as this institute of advanced knowledge. It breaks through disciplinary boundaries and is much more than a multidisciplinary institute. It's an interdisciplinary institute, which brings together knowledge, values, and vision. And the second sense of this word solution is that make it generates participatory solutions involving everyone in dialogue. Make it has put its focus on players from the global south, which gives us the opportunity to come here and to discuss with colleagues from all around the world with mutual respect and with a very human approach. Make it has also helped me to understand that there's a real opportunity to get to know other people. First of all, researchers are human beings and it's human beings that make a difference. And that's why I like Montpellier because Montpellier is an international place, but also maintains its human aspect. Make it gives us the opportunity to analyze solutions at a human level, taking into account a whole range of issues, not only from a global north or western perspective, but taking into account all approaches and perspectives. Thank you, Gabriela. Roel, I have a question for you as well. You've just finished your stay with Make It as part of an interdisciplinary context, which has been fairly close to your original institute in Sydney, where you were working on sustainable change. So what's the impact of your stay in Montpellier been on your work as a researcher and then perhaps more personally as well? Thank you. Thank you, Marianne, for this question. There's two aspects to my response. I am a ge geographer with an interdisciplinary role and I've been working for 15 years as an interdisciplinary researcher in a in Australian context with a very practical approach. 15 years, that's a long time. That means that you develop practices and habits in terms of research around sustainability, but also in terms of methodology and interdisciplinarity. For me, the Make It program has been really attractive because this word interdisciplinarity was really key in the uh, in the application process in 2020. And after 10 months of interaction with Make It here in Montpellier, I have really seen that Make It is a space. It's a physical space, but it's also an intellectual space, a a, a space with freedom and it's a safe space and it's been an ideal space to to reflect and to confront not other researchers but my own thinking and um, my own research in terms of interdisciplinarity 
And this has opened up new perspectives in terms of the climate. I've been focused on landscapes in the Anthropocene, and the method has been an interdisciplinary approach. And with what's been excellent is this the exchanges within this safe, friendly place, working with biologists, data scientists, people from a whole range of disciplines. This has really opened up a space for reflection at a personal level in terms of my own research, and it's been a very enriching experience. I perhaps thought when I came here that I already had a lot of experience as an interdisciplinary scientist, but that's not true. It's never too late to think and to be developed personally. And it's uh, thanks to the program and also my colleagues like Gabby and others who've given me this opportunity to reflect. Perhaps at a more personal level, I've decided to extend uh, the momentum of my project, and I'm going to continue with a book project, which was not initially planned as part of my project, but is going to require more work to capture what I've done here in Montpellier. It's a, a demonstration of an interdisciplinary approach on the theme of landscapes in the Anthropocene. Thank you very much, Joël. It's going to be strange to have our, our weekly seminars without you, but of course you'll always be welcome, like all of the other researchers from the previous uh, year as well. I want to ask you both another question. Gabriella, you have chosen to stay in Montpellier after your stay with Make It. In fact, half of around half of the pre previous uh, year have also stayed on with Montpellier for varying times. Could you explain uh, why you made that choice and how, what you've been doing for these last six months? Yes, uh, thank you, Marianne. After my stay with Make It, I was a, invited as a teaching professor in Paris in the Institute of Latin America Institute in Paris. And why do I mention that? It's because the two lessons that I've been teaching have been developed with Make It. It's about ways of thinking, because as invited scientists, we've had a lot of interaction with the cohort scientists, and we've talked a lot about controversial issues. It's not just about talking about fake news and fake science, which was the first topic, but it's also around this question of dialogue and thinking about the etymology of words. We need to understand that controversy, controversy is inherent to dialogue. It's not necessarily a problem, but we need to see it as an opportunity. So I brought this dynamic to Sorbonne Nouvelle University in Paris with uh, the discussion of misinformation and fake news around COVID in order to in all and also linked into myths in terms of rural development. So this approach has been uh, been well received by the students who are very interested in make it. I think there'll be a number of new applicants and I think uh, everyone wants to keep networking and so i'm now working after some thoughts from patrick calhan i i'm developing a european research council project on the use of information in the global south it's perhaps a fairly basic approach but make it has taught us not to be afraid of dialoguing with other disciplines. So I'm hearing about non-B DNA, and I was a bit of a shock. And then, but then I understood because uh, they, she used non-scientific jargon. And so that then 
help me to draw links with artificial intelligence, um, natural language processing, and languages in Africa. To what extent are asymmetries in languages can impl can influence sustainable development and the meaning of what sustainability means? So I'm working on this project with the CIRAD until July, so I won't be here forever, but I'm working on this until July with interactions and collaborative research. So we're crossing our fingers that you that you get the funding, the ERC funding for this. So perhaps just to end off one final question for you, Roel, if we look towards the future now, would you have any advice for the researchers who have just arrived so that they then make the most of their make it experience? And then perhaps also to any people who might be thinking about applying. Yes, of, of course, I think my main advice would be to open up. You need to take part. It's really easy to just stay on the well-worn path that you know well, but there's a real opportunity in this make it space to open up and don't be afraid. Take part, uh, have a go. It's really very important. Maybe everybody won't enjoy that. There might be researchers who find it difficult in terms of to, to, who find it difficult to take risks. But if you are open to taking risks, this is a really good opportunity, and you need to maximize this opportunity. It's, Make it is a really open program. There are very few very few obligations apart from the international event, but it's really down to participants to open up and to move forward. In terms of people who are thinking about applying but not sure, I think I would say the same. They need to open up and take part. And, and ensure that and make it will ensure this is something that researchers will be interested in. But I think it's really important to understand and take hold of the opportunity offered by make it to change the way you do research and move towards sustainability. I think it's really important for everybody working on sustainability to open up. And I think for me, Make It has been a laboratory of experimentation and it's been perfect for moving forward with this idea of changing the world and thinking about transitions towards sustainable development. I think that's something that's really very important and I invite everyone who sees the video to, to really think about applying. Thank you very much. Thank you, both of you, and thank you for your excellent French. Thank you for agreeing to do this discussion in French. It's really very important for us to stay in touch and to draw inspiration from your work. So thank you very much. And I suggest we look at the last two videos from for this year's researchers. So my name is uh, Margreet Zwarteveen. I'm working as a professor of water governance at an institute called IHE Delft, Institute for Water Education, which has an affiliation with UNESCO. And I'm also associated with the University of Amsterdam. Here in Montpellier, I'm affiliated with an interdisciplinary unit called UMR Geo, which brings together people from different institutes and universities 
both a natural scientist and social scientist, all working on water. So I'm very happy to, to be with that group of people. My fellowship is a, is a FIAS fellowship and I will be here for 10 months. So what is interesting is that also the UMRGO unit has a link with the new UNESCO Centre in Montpellier on water. My research project takes as its basic proposition that a lot of thinking and doing water and governing water is infused with the logic of control. So much that goes on in water and in water science is focusing on better measuring water, better accounting for it, better regulating it, with the idea that every drop of water needs to be accounted for and, uh, yes, controlled. My hypothesis or idea is that there would be merit in complementing this logic of control with a logic of care. And the reason for formulating this hypothesis is first of all that a lot of water is always will escape control. Water is capricious, it flows, seeps, evaporates, so full control is never achievable. But also water governance and water management brings together so many actors and so many different objectives and so many different interests that water management and governance is intrinsically complex. That means Actual doing water governance requires often minute adaptations, improvisations, experimentations that also are difficult to grasp or predict or indeed control. Someone in Montpellier sent me the, the call for applications and then I, I got this imaginary of 10 months of free space to think, to reflect, to read, it was like a very attractive. And so I'm very happy to be here and to indeed have more time to explore things that are a bit, little bit outside the day-to-day -day work and hopefully uh, get inspiration for new ideas and for new collaborations also. Something that is special about myself, maybe, is that I have lived in so many places during my life. During my studies, I was living for a while in Cameroon and then in Nicaragua. And then I got a job in Sri Lanka. I was working in Nepal, in Niger and in Mexico. By having interacted with so many people and having lived in so many places, I've really come to enjoy difference and diversity. And I appreciate getting to know many different ways of being, of engaging, of relating and of knowing. My name is Craig Gorgian. I'm an Associate Professor of Biomedical Engineering in the Weldon School of Biomedical Engineering at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, USA. I'm part of the Spring 2022 Make It Visiting Scientist program. I'll be coming to Montpellier for five months. And the hosting institution is the uh, Physiology Laboratory run by Dr. Pierre Sicard. My research program focuses heavily on small animal imaging. I'll be working with the Physiology Lab in Montpellier to combine ultrasound imaging with photoacoustic techniques, which combines optics and ultrasound to look at tissue composition along with geometry and function. I'm particularly interested in traumatic brain injury and the links to cardiac dysfunction after brain insults uh, using a mouse model of TBI uh, to study disease progression over months with this non-invasive approach. I applied to the Make It program to connect with others in the Montpellier community interested in big research and uh, societal questions that are cross-disciplinary. I'm really excited to engage and connect with other fellows and others uh, at University of Montpellier to answer some of these big questions out there that are, are cross-disciplinary and, and really need expertise in more than one area. Something special about me is that we've been preparing for our trip with my family, including our seven-year-old daughter and four-year-old son by baking French pastries over the last few months, including macaroons, financiers, eau claires, madeleines that we're excited to explore and have more of once we get to Montpellier.
Bonjour, bonjour à tous et tous. Good morning, everybody. I am pleased to be here to announce the Make It International Conference. What role is for science in times of crisis? Perspectives in the interconnected fields of health, environment and agriculture that we are organizing at Make It in collaboration with the South Center, an intergovernmental institution which, like us, is working to advance the sustainable development goals and in particular to strengthen North-South partnerships. It works to support relevant decision making in the international arena. We all recognize the importance and relevance of the subject of the conference as the COVID-19 pandemic has meant that we have felt the effects of a major crisis in all aspects of our lives and I dare to say that most of us have questioned the way we are and the way we do things in both our professional and our personal lives. For science and for scientists the challenges have been great and this experience invites us to think about new strategies for science in times of crisis. Many of us are questioning what and how we do research and perhaps more emphatically than ever, how we relate across our different disciplines so that scientific evidence is fairly understood and taken into account in decision making. We hear about the importance of multidisciplinarity systemic thinking, complex problem solving, the democratization of science and the need to strengthen the links between scientists, society and policymakers. Our distinguished make it follows know that these issues are very much linked to its mission and objectives. We heard this from the president of the university You'll be very aware of our holistic approach when we talk about health, the environment, agriculture and food. Uh, and we know that these fields are strongly interconnected. So with our international conference, we want to provide a platform to discuss these issues. To highlight what is obvious, but also what is not obvious to talk about global and local crises. And we hope that this debate will allow us to find answers to the big questions about the role of science in times of crisis and how to move forward. But in what direction are we moving? For those of you who know Make It, you will also know that we believe strongly in collective intelligence and collective construction. You can expect our conference to promote the multi or pluriverse approach and the search for answers in that sense. To move on to the more specific details of the conference now, we have invited high level international experts representing a variety of disciplines and expertise, including scientists, policymakers, scientific advisors, and representatives of civil society. The identity of these experts will soon be announced by the conference's virtual platform. This will be available from next week, and I'm just giving you a little snippet of what to expect today. The conference will be held on the 7th of April, all day long, in a hybrid format with the live event here at the Botanical Institute and online access to all of the conference resources via the virtual platform, which will include live sessions, roundtables, digital posters, testimonial galleries, etc. We have organized three discussion sessions. Let me show you the program of the event. A first session will talk about new crises, new roles for science within these crises. It will analyze current crisis scenarios and anticipate other possible scenarios, as well as critically analyze the lessons learned from past crises, including the COVID-19 crisis. We will then move on to a second session entitled Scientists in Crisis. 
and the science policy public interaction and what kind of organizational model we would require or desire. It speaks for itself and will have a strong focus on the Science Policy Society interface and will include discussion discussions on science diplomacy, building just collaborative networks, north-south collaboration, access to science, communication challenges, and many other things. A third discussion session on scientists in crisis. Keys to navigating a complex inquiry landscape, more focus on the academic and professional profiles of scientists with discussions on cross-disciplinarity, models of scientific production aimed at helping the scientific community to face up to the current challenges of post-normality. These sessions will be a prelude to a more global or general discussion with conference participants for which we propose putting in place small discussion groups in a hybrid format with meetings between virtual and on-site participants. Registration for the conference and submission of digital poster abstracts will open next week, and we will send you the invitation to access the virtual platform. Patrick has already mentioned that the conference topic will also be the working topic of the next edition of our cohort program. Given this, and in order to attract candidates from all over the world, we will use the momentum of the conference and the resources generated available on the virtual platform to take Make It and the South Centre on a global virtual tour, where we will provide details of our cohort programme. Details of this tour will also be available on the virtual platform shortly. I look forward to your participation and remind you that you can register for the conference next week. Without further ado, I will give the floor back to Patrick. Thank you very much. Bien. It is now time to conclude and I will wrap up very quickly as we've already said a lot of things. I'll be very quick. I have learnt this morning. I hadn't thought this way. Previously, there are five things that I've learnt and they're almost all uh, cross-cutting. The first is your interest. That's how you've expressed this past, present and future, your interest in cross disciplinarity for comparative intellectual discussion. And almost all of you mentioned that. The second thing that I learned, and we, we are a bit proud of that, Claire, is the attractiveness of the Montpellier community, the city, the sun, the landscapes, and all of this comes together to build our attractiveness. The third thing that I would like to share with you, it was perhaps less obviously expressed, but it's this ability that we have to come together and meet with other people to bring out new items to, to allow new information to emerge. We can see from past experiences here, Vienna, and um, Gabriela and Roel have, have been able to share what they have contributed to transformation. The fourth thing that I would like to share, this was mentioned by our colleague from the Network for Institutes for Advanced Studies. It's about taking risks within a secure environment. We don't necessarily always take lots of risks, but here there are no attacks. There is no aggression. Other colleagues from Institutes for Advanced Studies say that it is within these institutes that true intellectual and scientific creativity can be expressed. We're creating new forms, we're organizing doubts, we're 
taking a moderate risk and it's not going to impair our safety in any way. I'm going to end with a wordplay which may not be translated into English. It's about recreating the world. We want to make a new world. We want to rethink the way that we're building the world, the way that we're thinking about the future. But there's also an expression in French, refaire le monde, which means to talk about uh, everything and anything. And that is also something that we want to do here. And this is a friendly and fun encouragement for you to put the world to rights, uh, to, to talk about everything and anything together. This is a space where we can spend time together whilst putting the world to rights. Thank you.